Hey everybody, what's up? It's me, it's Pete, and I'm bringing you an indie taste test of Eternal. This is a card game in early access on Steam. Uh, it's something I've been playing recently and I've talked about on the podcast. Uh, but uh, I wanted to kind of show you what it's all about. Uh, just to give you kind of a little bit of background on me. I did something three years ago called the Great Digital TCG Search of 2014. Um, I was looking for a digital card game that, that appealed to me. Uh, the winner of that uh, whole thing was called Soulforge. Well, Soulforge uh, underwent some changes over time, eventually was shut down, uh, only to be rebooted by, by, I think a fan of the game ended up buying it off of the developers and is running it now. But it, it wasn't the game that I, I uh, had grown to really like uh, back then. So I've continued to search uh, for, for a card game that I, I I could play and enjoy, um, and and never found one. I've tried Hearthstone again, and I find that game to be garbage most of the time. Um, but you you can check, uh, you know, hit me up. I'll give you give you my reasoning. Um, but so far, I've put about eleven hours into Eternal. Um, it is both on the PC and on Android. I don't know about iOS, um, but you can play it mobile uh, and link your account. Um, and there's a lot of elements about it that I like, and I'm going to show you. Um, first of all, uh, let's go through some of the game modes. There's a large campaign, and by playing the campaign, you unlock all the theme decks uh, that they have to offer, which is essentially covering um, the basic mana uh, decks that you want. So it gives you like a basic set of cards to kind of work with, as well as some decks to immediately go and play with. Uh, there's puzzles, uh, which we can we can go ahead and do one of those uh, after I get through the game modes. There's Gauntlet, um, which in Gauntlet you can play for free. You just take one of your decks and you face AI opponents, like a series of, um, I think it's uh, seven. I'll, uh, I only have two full decks that I, on my, in my repertoire right now. Oh, so it took us straight into the game. Uh, let's just concede this. Because um, I, I want to go over the game once first. I believe it's a series of seven matches, though, that you have to go through. Um, and then you're, let's see, it's seven matches. And depending on uh, how well you do, you earn rewards. Um, there's Forge, which is similar. Create a deck of 25 cards and play against an AI, uh, a series of AI controlled uh, opponents, which is nice because it's 2,500 in-game currency and you keep every single card that you build in your deck, uh, which is cool. One sec, I got a cat fight. They love to fight while I'm doing indie taste tests. Um, so Forge is, Forge is a cool way to like do a draft without the pressure of playing online. Um, there's casual and ranked modes, which is just you take a deck you've built and you go in, you play, you play games, um, and, and you get rewards based on, you know, winning, you get a first win of the day award, which is usually a pack. Um, and there's a whole ranking system. I'll show you that. And then there's, there's draft mode and draft is, uh, the competitive draft. It costs 5,000 in-game currency, which you can grind out pretty easily. It's just probably a few days. Um, and for example, the first time I played a draft, uh, my, uh, winnings from that first draft. I think I won like five out of the seven games you could possibly win. My winnings from that draft covered another draft. And you keep all the cards you, you, you get from that. Um, so I think one of the things that is important to be said about this game is that uh, there is a real, a tangible way to collect a lot of cards, um, especially cards you want without having to spend money. Um, 
and I'll get into that after I show you the game. Uh, so let's start out by by just playing a ranked match. Um, I'll go in with my fire deck. Um, the game plays a lot like Magic the Gathering. If you're familiar with Magic the Gathering, you'll kind of immediately pick up and play this one. Some of the rules are different. Um, so you get your starting hand, you can redraw immediately. These are your mana cards, uh, and then these are our cards you can play. Um, this deck's supposed to be a little bit faster than that, so we'll redraw. That's a mediocre hand. Um, so you play your mana, and it shows up down there. Um, and then you could spend your mana uh, to play cards. Uh, you have spells, you have creatures. Um, so that's a creature. They're exhausted when they first come out, which means they can't attack the first turn they're played. Um, you've got a wide variety of of spells and abilities. Let's uh, throw out that. We'll get three goblins. Each player starts with 25 health. Uh, you draw a card each turn. You can play one mana each turn. This guy has not played anything. There are, unlike Hearthstone, there are instants. Um, so this is good. We can sacrifice a unit here to deal three damage to a character as well as three damage to the opposing player. And then we'll keep attacking. Also, this game works differently from Hearthstone because uh, it has the magic gather the gathering style of combat. And the magic ga the gathering style of combat is that when you uh, when you attack, you don't attack specific uh, creatures. Uh, you attack a a player, um, and then they decide how to how to block. Uh, and, and so you see, I'm going to issue a general attack. He'll choose what to block. In Hearthstone, you attack specific creatures. So I'm trying to keep the pressure on a little bit. And then creatures have certain abilities, like that guy can get lifesteal if he has four attack or more. If he gets lifesteal, I'm kind of boned, uh, because gaining health is like... Okay, so yeah, he just gained some life. That hurts me a lot. Because um, I'm trying to just deal as much damage as possible as early as possible. So I've got him down to 9 health. Can deal 2 damage to the en enemy player and draw a fire sigil. That's good because it'll thin out my deck a little bit. I think I'm in a little bit of trouble here. If he gets any more lifesteal cards, I'm probably boned because my deck, my deck pretty much just uh, it uses its gas as you would, uh, and then if it runs out of gas, I lose the game. Um, you know, it happens. Uh, we'll see what he plays here. This guy's invulnerable to damage again in his turn. Okay. Let's start our turn. Oh, perfect draw. So this does damage equal to my influence, which is the amount of mana I have. It'll deal six damage, which is his exact health. I also had a torch in hand. So I killed him. Uh, he's dead. Uh, I've destroyed him. I will uh, gain some points in my rank. I'm bronze league rank one right now. Um, so, and then you get a series, if you win three ranked games, you'll get the silver chest. Right now I'll get the bronze chest. So I get 50 gold and I get this, uh, common card. So, okay. So yeah, that's kind of, uh, generally how a game works. You play your mana, you play your spells, uh, you got fast spells, which are essentially... Spells you can cast on your opponent's turn. Um, you've got regular spells. You've got creatures. Every, there's insane abilities that break the game. Um, it's very ma much a magic ripoff in a lot of ways. Um, 
although it changes some of the rules of magic in very meaningful ways. But I'm not going to go deep into that uh, to, and bore people. Um, so I'm going to show you opening a pack. I was saving up for a draft, but I love you guys so much that I'll 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 buy a pack. Uh, so that's a I purchased a pack. Um, we'll go, we'll open that pack. So as you can see, you get about uh, 12 cards in a pack, um, including one rare or above. Your greens are your uncommons, uh, uncolored or commons. Uh, and then you can, you know, look over your pack and, and see what you got. Um, and let's see what a rare is. I like that they hide the rare. It's a beckoning lumen. At the end of your turn, if you gained health, draw a card. Nice. Okay. So, then you can... I'll show you this crafting thing here in a second. Uh, in the deck builder. But first I'll show you a puzzle. Now this was something... Puzzles are something I really liked in... Um, in other magic video games. You're outmatched, win this turn anyway. Because to kind of challenge your knowledge of the game a little bit. They put you in some weird scenarios that probably wouldn't happen. Um, oh my. Lot, lot to do here. So I got through the most basic puzzles. Um, are these strangers? They are. Well, the one is. Let's try that, I don't know. Um, can exhaust store. Do strangers have charge? Yes. We could play this guy. Play this deadly thing on her. You can activate to kill a unit. We'll kill the unit with life steal. That seems like the obvious choice. Uh, we'll run this guy out here. We'll attack with everybody. I'm just guessing right now. I didn't actually think about this. Uh, yeah, I think this will work. And then we'll cast our torch on the opponent. Deal three damage and win. So you get the little puzzles. You get small rewards for it. They're cool little challenges uh, to go and do. So we got 20 gold for that. And those are, those are free. You can do those, you know, whenever. Um, so, uh, what else to show you? Um, you know, Gauntlet's pretty straightforward. Forge is pretty straightforward. Uh, both really enjoyable, though. Uh, the difference between Draft and Forge, if you're wondering, is Forge, you get 25 cards. Uh, Draft, you get, uh, like 40-some? Four packs worth. So what do we say? 48 cards. So yeah, it's about half the cost, but you also get about half the cards. So that makes sense, but it's up to you. Um, one of the things I really like about draft though, uh, is that draft in most card games, just they will have you face opponents based on, uh, you know, how well you're doing in the draft. And it always feels like you're just being matched up against random people. Some people will destroy you, other people will you know, give you give you no hard time at all. There's actually a draft ranking in Eternal. Um, so you're going to be faced up against people of similar skill levels, which is really cool. Um, and a, a good idea, honestly. So let's see. Uh, let's show off the deck builder. And then I'll probably play one more game. Oh, I wanted to show you guys this. In the profile, they show you how much you've collected. So after 11 hours, I have about 27% of the Omens of the Past set complete, as well as 34% of the Empty Throne sets. So two sets I pretty much have complete. Uh, and I've only played... Well, I've got about a third complete of two sets. And I've I've barely played that much. You change your avatar and, and all that. Um, so their their system of rewards is is pretty good. I'm gonna change to a more blue looking character. 
Sure, I like that guy. He's big and dumb. Uh, legendary are going to be the toughest to play. Oh, and then I'll I'll show you guys the. First, I'll go to the to the the uh, deck builder. One of the things I really like that they did with this game is that if you have a card you don't care about, um, and we can we can do a lot of sorting. So let's just say uh, legendary cards. Um, if you have a legendary card, for instance, like like let's say I, I look at this uh, Call the Ancients uh, card, okay? And let's say I didn't want it. I could destroy it to gain uh, a specific type of currency which lets me buy other cards. Um, in most games, you need to have at least the maximum amount of copies you can put in a deck before you then destroy the card to to gain currency. So I would need four legendaries of Call of the Ancients and then get a fifth one to be able to destroy it, even if I didn't want a single copy of it in my collection. They let you destroy it no matter what, which is awesome. Like, changes the way you collect for these games, and that is a really good thing. Um, you can see all my legendary cards here. I'll add in the rest of the mana colors. Um, so that that really changes the way you you build decks because it's also not that expensive to craft cards. Um, when you look at common cards, I don't have any heavy axes, right? I'm gonna take that out of there. They only cost fifty to create, and I have seven hundred. There's also animated versions, which are more expensive, but, you know, if you want it, um, if you're crazy. Uh, so it's cheap to, to craft common cards, like even uncommon cards, which are going to make up a lot of your deck. You're looking at only 100, and you'll collect that pretty quickly. And you can always destroy, uh, destroying a heroic card you don't want is, is 800, so... It's worth like eight common or eight uncommon cards. So that made it really easy for me to build my first two decks. And if you look, like my fire deck, uh, it pretty much has four copies of all the cards I need. Uh, there are a couple cards I'd like to have and add in, but I can work towards those and it's not going to be that big of a problem. So. It lets you kind of feel better about building the deck you want to be playing. Also should be noted, deck sizes are about 75. Um, 75 always. Uh, they also have a function in this game, which I like, where uh, power, which is your mana, uh, is automatically generated and added to the deck. Which is a great feature because it, it alleviates the need to think about your mana base. Um, they're always going to add, you know, whatever you have minus your normal cards. Um, so if you have 50 normal cards, they're going to add 25 power. That's up to you. But they will make it so your mana your mana base is best served for your deck. Like in my uh, Time Primal deck, uh, I didn't customize the power. But I know... From playing the deck that there's way more blue mana cards, because I need them, than white mana cards. Or yellow mana cards, sorry. Um, and that's a really neat feature that alleviates that, that stress, um, which is cool. Uh, you can also import decks from your clipboard, uh, from your last draft, from your last forge, which is just a good add-on feature. Uh, issues I've had with the game so far include crashing. Uh, I've had the game crash on me a couple times during matches. It was easy to boot back in and then jump right back into a game, but uh, yeah, it was it was frustrating. Um, so let's play. I'll I'll play one more match for you guys, uh, and then you know we'll call it. Uh, I think I think that covered the majority of the game for everybody. Uh, that hand looks pretty good. Not great. Not great at all. I don't have any stuff to stop them early, but... So if they come out hot, this is what would be considered a slow control deck. I... 
it works very slowly. So if they're playing something fast, uh, I'm bone this card will help. So just to get into a more technical side, one of the uh, one of the things that is very different about this game from Magic is that you're you don't have to spend specific type of mana on any turn. And I know that's going to seem strange to some people uh, who aren't exactly going to understand what I'm saying. Uh, what I mean is, in Magic, you have to, like, tap lands to say, like, I have two blue, uh, two blue mana, and I have uh, one white mana. Oh, I used my two blue mana, and now I can't use the white mana. Not, not quite like that in 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 this game, which is good. Uh, he's playing a pretty fast, aggressive deck. If I can get to seven mana, like I think I'm gonna be all right. I don't think, I don't think I'll get to seven mana. His deck's super great. Ooh, that that'll help. That'll help a lot. Although I still need more cards. That does two damage to each unit. Your units uh, regain their health at the end of the turn. Oh, strangers have flying. So I need to find a way to kill some of these units. I can put one back into its owner's hand. That's good. But the problem is I'm still I still have no mana. We don't let up. Uh, so I guess we return. This guy to his hand. And then we'll uh, we'll just block that guy to uh, avoid the damage. I can transform a unit into a 1-1 one, one frog, which I guess I should do. Still haven't drawn mana, so I'm, I'm pretty much boned. You can see you got your emotes and stuff here. Hi. I know you're crushing me, but... Uh, I mean, I'm dead in the water, but I'm, I'm giving it my best shot. Yeah, we just did not draw very well this game. I don't know. I stun you. <laughs> I lost the game, but yeah. Uh, games move fast. They're quick. They, they don't last very long. I've had a couple last a little bit longer. Uh, but yeah. Got a little bit mana screwed there. If we had gotten to seven mana, like I think we would have too. We would have been able to at least uh, have a chance. Uh, so you lose some rank and stuff, and then you move on. Um, but yeah, that is Eternal. It also does this. So there you go. If you want to see behind the whatever that thing is, yeah. Uh, so thanks for watching. Um, if you want to check out Eternal, it's free to play on Steam. Um, still in early access, so keep that in mind. Uh, check out our podcast, Mandate Radio, and uh, check out my review channel, Basic Reviews. And I'll, as always, like and subscribe uh, for more content. I appreciate you viewing, and I will see you next time for another Indie Taste Test. Have a good night. Bye.